Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial is a continuation for our previous tutorial on the concrete damage plasticity material. Uh, in this one, I'm going to discuss further the tension stiffening, the modeling of the tension stiffening in concrete. Uh, some of you have asked uh, several questions regarding this. So I will try to go into more detail into this modeling aspect of the CDB material. So uh, just to uh, uh, quick overview here to so to simulate the tension stiffening behavior of the concrete. So this is the how the concrete behaves uh, once it reach the ultimate tensile strength and then it deteriorates and the crack opens pretty much. So in order to model uh, this behavior, there are two main options. Uh, well, in total, there are three options, but uh, two of those are the main options. So the first option, this is the one that we discussed in our previous tutorial. So this was the option where we use the stress strain data. So we define the stress strain data. So from this option over here, when we define the tensile behavior, we selected strain. And then we had to provide two sets of data, pretty much the data points that defined the yield stress cracking strain behavior. So this option, what we did in this option, we pretty much defined the material softening behavior because we provided how the stress uh, in tension goes down, deteriorates with increasing strains. All right. So this is what we did in the previous time. And uh, the same if you add damage as well, in addition to the plasticity, when you define the concrete damage, you also defined the relation between the damage variable D with respect to the cracking strain as well. The second option that we didn't discuss, and I'm going to discuss more in detail in this tutorial, is by using the second option, which is displacement, the cracking displacement. So here we are going to define again the stress, but with respect to the cracking displacement. And this option is referred to as the fracture energy criterion. So again, the one that we did before, this is by defining stress strain behavior, material softening. So we have the stress with respect to epsilon cracking or the cracking strain. And the one that we are going to discuss here today, this is the other option where you define the tension stiffening behavior using the stress cracking displacement instead of strain, which is the fracture energy criterion. So here you have the stress with respect to UCK, which is the cracking displacement. So when can I use that and when can I use that? What are the advantages and disadvantages? So let's go through this very quickly. So first, uh, if I look here at the one that we used before, the stress strain data by defining stress drain data, uh, which is pretty much material softening, this is an acceptable option as long as the concrete is adequately reinforced is well reinforced pretty much. If your model, you have lots of reinforcement and you are not getting any localized cracking in a given region of the model. So the cracking happens in a distributed manner. Otherwise, if these two criteria are not met, then what will happen is that actually your results, if you are getting localizations of cracking, like uh, let's say that you are uh, trying to model a column and you have uh, localized cracking, significant cracking in one location of the column because you don't have enough reinforcement or an excessive loading at a given location, then your results can be considerably sensitive to the mesh size. And you need to account or you need to tune this curve. It's not independent definition anymore. No, it becomes dependent on the mesh size and you need to calibrate it in order to make sure it's correct by some validation or so on. So this is a problematic aspect of utilizing stress strain data uh, if you have this issue because you are getting mesh sensitivity. So if you have finer mesh, the behavior of your model or whatever you are simulating will be different than if you have a coarser mesh because how the strains are going to localize will be pretty different between two different meshes. And then you can try this actually uh, with a, a small model or something like that. You can try different meshes by utilizing the stress strain and you will see some differences. So instead, what you can do if you have some kind of model that you have localized uh, strain 
that uh, cracking sorry that will appear in part of the model then what you can do instead you can use the fracture energy criterion by defining instead of stress strain we define stress displacement and the displacement here this is the cracking displacement this stress displacement relation unlike the stress strain is dependent on the energy required to open a unit area of the crack so if this is the curve like that so you have here this point so this point represent the ultimate tensile strength of your concrete material that's fine and then you have another point here that represents the ultimate displacement of your crack and the area underneath this curve this is what we refer to as gf and this is the energy required to open a unit area of the crack and with this definition this gf parameter this energy is a material property and it's not dependent on the mesh size so if you use this option the size of your mesh will not affect the results so how can we model we discussed before how to model the stress strain and now we are going to discuss in more detail how to define the stress displacement cracking displacement behavior so again you just need to go into abacus you need to select displacement and then you need to provide this data the yield stress and the corresponding cracking displacement so how can we do that well before we go to that uh, with respect to this uh, gf if you look into abacus abacus for instance provides you with these two reference values like 0.04 newton per millimeter so these are the units of gf again because you have a stress integrated with respect to displacement so newton per millimeter square force per area and then this is multiplied by a distance unit and then you get force per distance pretty much or newton per millimeter so you have these two values like 0.04 for concrete with 20 megapascal and you have 0.12 or 40 megapascal these are just reference values if you look in literature there are lots of research and lots of papers that did calibration and provide like experimental uh, results and calibrations for this value of uh, gf so in order to define this curve again if i want to generate this data you need to know two things you need to know the shape of the curve and you need to know one of two things you need to either know gf which is the area under the curve or if you know the ultimate cracking displacement so basically you need to know gf this area or you need to know this ultimate displacement this point over here if you know one of them you can compute the other one so if you look in literature there are numbers of shapes and models that can be used to represent this stress displacement curve there is the linear one, the most easy one, uh, as you see here, if you know it's linear and you know this value or this value, it's very easy to establish this curve and generate data points that represent this linear curve. Because as you know here, if this is GF, if you know GF, for instance, and you already know the ultimate tensile strength, then you know that the area under the curve is a triangle, so half sigma TU, multiplied by the ultimate cracking uh, displacement so this is equal to gf so if you know gf you can compute this value over here and then you can know the equation of the straight line and then you can generate the data the other option there is the bilinear curve and it looks like this again if you know the gf or the uck there is an equation for each of these two branches of the bilinear curve if you look in the model code 1990, you will find the equation that describe this, uh, the shape of this curve, how it's computed, the analytical expressions. Uh, there is the power relation or the exponential relation, and this one can be found in this uh, reference over here. So now you have a nonlinear curved relation, and uh, if you look in this reference, you will find the equation that describes this nonlinear power relation. So it's a pretty straightforward. The analytical expressions can be found in these uh, documents. There are other options that you can probably find in literature for different ways of representing this stress dis cracking displacement curve. But uh, you will find also many argue that 
it really doesn't matter the shape of the curve as long as the area under the curve is the same so as long as gf is the same the results in general are not affected much by the shape of the curve but this again you need to do some reading in order to understand well how this can affect or even do some exercises or iterations yourself to see uh, what will be the difference between different models that's it this concludes this tutorial quick overview about the, the stress displacement option uh, definition for the tension stiffening i hope you found this useful and see you in the next tutorial